Hey guys, uh, Will here. I want to talk with you about satellites, uh, things in orbit, and altitude and temperature for a second. Uh, people will have you believe that temperature is not an issue, that satellites can orbit over the Earth no problem at any altitude. I disagree, and let me tell you why. Okay, so first off, there's uh, many different layers here. Um, you can see the International Space Station is about 400 kilometers. So it's about right here, pretty much where it shows, in the thermosphere, right? So we're looking at about uh, 1,000? No, I mean, 1,000 is being generous, 1,000 Kelvin. Now, my main problem is these geosynchronous satellites that supposedly uh, watch this kind. This kind right here. This kind that stays locked exactly over the Earth without moving. They say it's because it's in a perfect geosynchronous orbit. Now, one, do you see any other satellites here? There's supposedly thousands and thousands and thousands of other satellites in orbit. I don't see any. Now, how can this stay locked perfectly over this perfect spot? So, if you were sitting here on this, uh, this land here, this satellite would be directly above you all the time. Uh, it would appear as a star in the sky when the sun shone on it. And uh, you would see at all times. You'd be able to get uh, good shots with the telescope. Now they say you can't because it's so far away. So how far exactly is um, it's geostationary? Now that's the only way to do it. Now they say geostationary is you know 36,000 kilometers. Huh. Well... We're looking at 400,000 and the temperature here. And so you're going to tell me these are flying at 36,000 and this is over 3,000 Kelvin? So temperature has to be a problem, right? Huh. Well, I'm going to drag this down here for a second. You can see this is spaceplace.nasa, actual literal, literal NASA. And so people will tell you that, oh, well, you know, it's just because you're not high, and they say it's because you're not high, and it's, you know, the temperature is fine, and there's no air there to dissipate the, there's no air there, so there's no heat. Well, let's talk about 36,000. I completely disagree because NASA says outer space is colder than North Pole in December, but it can also be hotter. On Earth, the air helps even out the temperature. There's no air in space. You can fry on one side while freezing on the other. For spacecraft, this spells big trouble. Now, let me just say, we're not just talking about spacecraft. What are the pictures here? Oh, that's a little frozen satellite. Oh, that's a little satellite there. So they're talking about keeping things cozy in space. And look, they're talking about three little miniature satellites with heat control systems, which was a challenge for thermal engineers. Okay. If heat control is a challenge for thermal engineers, how do they put these very scientific, they're supposedly, you know, weather related and, you know, taking these videos and everything. I don't know how we get the videos back from 36,000 kilometers away, but, uh, you know, they say that it's just not affected by that temperature. Well, metal, metal melts at that. 
and they say this was a big challenge for thermal engineers. So how many geosynchronous or geosynchronous satellites are there? Because we, we must remember the geosynchronous are all at about 36,000 kilometers, 35 and a half. Well, let's look. Huh. 1995. Well, if that's such a challenge, and if this is so hard for the temperature, ah, we had no problem with 95. <clears throat> 99. And look, all of these conveniently are a couple of degrees off from each. Because yeah, they couldn't be on the same longitude, yet yeah, they would hit each other in the same latitude. Actually, this is determined longitude, so that's very bizarre. Um, now, geostationary orbit, just so you know. See, it rotates around, and a bunch of these are rotating at the equator. And so they appear like they're not going to move from here. Just bizarre. So you go down here and you look, oh look, there's some more 99s, there's some 97s, yeah, yeah, we definitely, it was fine for us to go to 35,000 kilometers and it just sit there in the 97, yeah, I'm going to really believe that one. There's over 140 um, geosynchronous geo orbit satellites, and I've never heard of one. So... Astronomers locate satellites by watching them move across the sky. You can watch them move and they'll have a, you know, a steady movement and they'll be lit up. Well, that's kind of bizarre. Because these wouldn't move, these geosynchronous wouldn't move. Now, wouldn't we possibly mistake these for planets and such? Wouldn't astronomers have to know exactly where these are so they don't uh, they don't say, "Hey, look, it's Venus." Hey, look, it's Mars. Oh no, that's a satellite. It's just uh, stationary. And also, people say, "Hey, where are the photos of satellites?" They're just not really there. There's some photos of the International Space Station, but just not really satellites. We had geo-locked satellites. Taking a picture of this would be trivial. It would be nothing. So, I generally disagree with that. I just don't think it could happen. Um... You can go through the database here. They, they tell you, you know, okay, well, this is how they figured out that uh, satellites and we'd be able to orbit. And if you really believe that this type of map would let us orbit a satellite 36,000 kilometers away from the Earth, I got a bridge to sell. stationary they would have to be moving faster than that if if these are moving at the speed of the earth then that's saying GPS satellites are moving faster than the earth that's interesting because wouldn't the earth be moving faster than those satellites Aren't they just orbiting while we're spinning? Huh. Pretty bizarre. Well, find out about the exosphere here, right? It's the transition. Some interesting facts. Read this. The upper limit is the last point. at which the Earth's gravity still has any influence on particles. Using this definition, the boundary could be as high as 120,000 miles, halfway to the moon. It's 
So even halfway to the moon, Earth's gravity may still have an effect on things. And yet they want you to assume that these are rotating perfectly locked with the Earth, while ones closer are not. How come you have to go so far away to get locked into the earth? People say that's how planes rotate in our atmosphere is because it's like friction and they're closer to the earth and everything's just rotating. What, the exosphere is rotating also? Wouldn't this apply to satellites? Or does this show that it does not apply to satellites thanks again guys i appreciate you uh looking through this with me um i just think is there a likelihood that we have satellites out here floating perfectly with the same exact speed of the earth and i think no we do not take care till another video Enjoy you guys. Enjoy your comments. Thanks for